Welcome in the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. You can also find us every day on Dash Radio. Download, download the Dash Radio app. Search for Nothing But Net, and you'll find us every day, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Pacific. I also have a new show. I guess the timing of this is not ideal, but it's also every day, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. on OnsideRadio.com. So if you want to hear something besides the heat, we talk a lot of dolphins, hurricanes and all the other South Florida sports there. And I bring on only five reasons guests. So if you're listening to this on a Thursday, I'm going to have jazz Santana. Who's part of our sixth ring show. He's going to be joining me to preview Canes versus Virginia coming up here on Saturday. Also check out five reasons, sports.com five reasons, sports.com where I'm flouting all the chi- child labor laws because Brady Hawk, our 17 year old <laughs> wonder boy has been putting up like six stories a day without even telling me, but you'll find them interesting. And they are sort of inspiring a lot of our content here on five on the floor. So we're going to get to more of the stuff that Brady's written. And yes, I'm going to bring Brady on the show in the next week or two, as soon as I talk to the authorities about it. Also check out our YouTube channel, our five reasons, YouTube channel. Now at 8,000 subscribers, we just put up, the Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua and Brian Flores uh, Zoom conferences from today in which Ryan Fitzpatrick, he was really happy when Tua got on the field in the last game, but not quite so happy to find out that he lost his job to Tua and also the way it went down didn't go over all so well. So make sure that you check that out and all the other videos on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Also the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, including Biscayne Bay Brewing, the official craft beer of Inter-Miami, the Miami Marlins, and us. This is South Florida's actual independent brewery. Biscayne Bay is owned by local guys who employ people in this community to make their beer right here in South Florida. These guys are committed to our community and support Five Reasons Sports so we can keep bringing you all the local sports content that you can handle if you care about supporting local business and drinking amazing beer, grab their stuff. That's Marlins Lager, Miami Pale Ale, and Tropical Bay IPA at all major retailers throughout South Florida. It's the beer we're drinking at Five Reasons Sports. And make sure you ask for it. Make sure you ask for it because there are a lot of restaurants that actually are stocking it, but it may not necessarily be on the menu. I found that the other day when I was at Pembroke Garden. So make sure you check that out. Ask for Biscayne Bay Brew. And now today's episode one two three four five on the floor welcome to five on the floor a daily show on the miami heat and the nba featuring ethan skolnick with alphonse sydney alex toledo and greg sylvander part of the five reasons sports network All right, Ethan Skolnick back here on five on the floor. Here is today's floor plan. We may be joined by Alf on Sydney. Not quite sure about that yet, but check out the episode that I did with Alf. Sort of, I don't know, bringing back all of your tweets from after the Heat lost in the NBA Finals and what that Heat team meant to you. Uh, It's one of our more popular episodes so far. So make sure you check that out. That was just put on all of our feeds Yesterday, also our recent episodes uh, about Victor Oladipo, about Josh Richardson, about DeMar DeRozan, all of these players who could be possibilities for the Heat. Today, I do have Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander on Twitter. You can also follow Alex Toledo at Tropical Blanket on Twitter. We're just going to talk about one player today. That's it. One player, because there was some news today. There's no jinx on five on the floor anymore. We had Tyler Hero on. He scored 37. We had Keon Dooling on. The Jazz hired him to work for them. We had Stan Van Gundy on. Stan Van Gundy is now the coach of the New Orleans Pelicans. So congratulations to Stan. Of course, this is his fourth coaching job in the NBA. Fourth coaching job. I think this one will go better because unlike Detroit, he doesn't have both jobs. He can just coach. And he's going to have a really good general manager there in David Griffin. Um, We thought we'd do this episode for a few reasons. Obviously, a lot of you want to hear about Drew Holiday and the possibilities to the Heat. Uh, I do think the circumstances may change with Stan there as a head coach. But also... Stan Van Gundy and David Griffin are two of the people I know the best in the NBA. Um, And now they're working together. And so I do think I'll have some insight on what they may do. All right. So let's get right to it. Do you think Alex that Stan joining the Pelicans as the head coach crafting this thing around Zion and maybe Brandon Ingram, we'll see makes it more or less likely that drew holiday becomes available. You see, it's really, really tough because I, I can kind of see it both ways, right? I obviously don't have any information. I'm sure you guys will shed some light on how they feel and how they, you know, plan to move forward. But I really do think that's the key to, you know, anything happening. 
I was kind of, you know, unsure on if a Drew Holiday trade would ever happen. I, I know we talked about it kind of midway through the season. And then I, I said, you know, wait till the off season. But then, uh, you know, we kind of saw coming the Stan Van Gundy thing. And, you know, obviously it wasn't announced till today. And you guys had mentioned that, oh, he really likes him and he would want to keep him. But and as you just mentioned, he's not the GM. David Griffin is. So he's going to have the ultimate say on, on how they want to move forward, whether as a young team or a team that can compete in the West right now. I don't know that they showed that throughout the bubble. Uh, like they got, you know, out like Phoenix showed that they're a step ahead of the Pelicans right now. Uh, the, the Grizzlies are obviously a step ahead of the Pelicans. You've got the Warriors coming back. The Blazers are going to be healthier next season. So I just think the West is going to be really, really deep. So I think it's tough to kind of sell that. But at the end of the day, like they do still have a ton of talent. Like Ingram is an all-star, a guy who made, who made the all-star team. We know the type of talent Zion is. I don't think he was there last season. So, you know, I, I really do. I, I have a hard time saying one way or the other. My gut feeling is what you guys were saying, that he's going to want to keep Drew for a little bit first. I don't think they're, they're going to look to try to trade Drew Holiday right after getting Stan, especially after hearing what Stan has had to say about him. I think maybe, you know, see how it goes and by the trade deadline next season or whatever. I don't know how that's going to work, right, with trade deadline, but maybe give it a season with, with Stan before they, they address that. I think that's how I'm leaning right now. Yeah, it's interesting, Greg, because a lot of this is about timeline, right? And I had many conversations with David Griffin the year that I was up in Cleveland about maximizing the timeline with LeBron, right? You, you had LeBron as an older player then. He was 30 years old when he went back, 20, what, 29, 30 when he went back to Cleveland. And everything that David and Kobe Altman tried to do in Cleveland was to build around that LeBron, like where he was in his career. You only have him for a short period of time. You got to bring in the pieces that are going to fit for him then. Well, this is a totally opposite charge, right? Because now you have a 20-year-old player <laughs> who, who could be the next LeBron, right? I mean, we certainly saw glimpses of it last year with Zion, right? In the bubble, he wasn't really healthy. They were holding him back, et cetera. But he is the piece, right? Whether, what, whatever they do with Brandon Ingram and his money and whether they decide he's a max player or not at this stage, it's still about Zion. And there still, still has to kind of be proved that Zion and Brandon Ingram are a good fit together. How do you maximize Zion at this stage when he's 20, when you've got Drew Holiday, who is, what, 30, right? So, and Drew feels older than that because he's been in the league so damn long, but at one point he was the youngest player in the league. Does it even make sense to keep Drew around when you know that Zion is probably two, three years away from kind of leading your team deep in the playoffs? So the Homer Heat fan in me wants to say, no, absolutely, the timelines don't match up and they should uh... – they should sell low on Drew Holiday to Miami. But I do think that particularly with Griffin and Van Gundy kind of leading the charge there, that there is a balance between having competent, experienced, talented veterans around these young guys. Like, although their timelines don't match up, do you really want to surround Zion, Lonzo Ball, and, and all of those young guys, Jackson Hayes and such, with – a bunch more young guys? I don't think so. I think you, you need to have a balance there. And I think they have it with JJ Redick at the moment and they have it with, uh, with Drew Holiday. So uh, I kind of lean in the direction that I think that they, it's going to take a lot to move him. Mm -hmm. I ultimately think that there's going to be teams out there that are, uh, that don't have the upcoming flexibility in their favor. They don't have multiple players, fawning over the idea of going to Miami as we kind of seen alluded to in reports throughout the league. Ultimately, I think that there's going to be other teams out there that can outbid Miami because they're not going to want to come off of their premium assets for Drew Holiday. One, because it could compromise 2021 space. And two, because I just think that they're honestly looking at bigger fish. Let's look at the let's look at the cap sheet for New Orleans here for a second, just to get a sense of kind of where they are and where the ages of the players are. So Drew next year is supposed to make twenty six point three million dollars. It's roughly fifteen percent of the projected current cap. And again, we don't know exactly where that's going to be. The next guy down is making half as much, which is J.J. Redick in the last year of his deal, making 13 million. Then Lonzo Ball at 11 million, he's just 22. Zion making 10 million. Um, they've got an early bird on Darius Miller, who's 30, that's at 7 million. Jackson Hayes at 5 million. Uh, Nicolo Melli at 3.8. Josh Hart at 3.4. And Nikhil uh, Alexander Walker at 3.1. That's all they've got, okay? And of those players I mentioned, 
You've got, again, Lonzo 22, Zion 20, Jackson Hayes 20, Josh Hart 25, Alexander Walker 22. I mean, that's the core going. And of course, Ingram, right? Ingram. They've got to decide what they're going to do with Ingram. But you're also talking about, you know, a young player. Um, I get what you're saying, Greg. Like you want the right veterans around Zion. But this is a veteran who's taking up a very big chunk of your cap. So to me, the decision becomes, do, do you think you can compete in the West next year? And Alex, you just ran off a number of teams that at, at, at least right now, even with Van Gundy going as a coach, which I think is a huge upgrade, mm-hmm. other teams that are better positioned. The Lakers are better positioned because they're the Lakers. They have LeBron. The Clippers are still better positioned, even with the coaching change. Maybe the coaching change even helps. Who knows? The Blazers, as you mentioned, health, they will be healthier. Okay. Uh, you would anticipate the Nuggets mm-hmm. are still there. The Jazz get Bogdanovich back. So, you, and then uh, I don't know if you've got you a should... bunch of other younger teams that are coming up at our, right now. Exactly. Just a little bit ahead, you know, as far as what we, when we last saw them. Yeah. And then you take a look also at, uh, you know, a couple of the other. I mean, look, I don't know what's going to be left, what the wreckage of Houston is going to look like, but there's still a competitive playoff team if Harden's there. And Oklahoma City, I mean, they may trade Chris Paul, which could change the dynamic, but yeah. there's there's talent there, and they, they've got a ton of draft assets. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good point. Uh, you know, it's just, like I said, it's going to be an extremely tough Western Conference like it always is. I don't know how many teams are actually going to be trying to lose next season in the West. You know what I'm saying? Like, name them for me. I'm not even really sure. Who's at the bottom of the West this year? Because I'm, I'm – Phoenix, Phoenix won eight, went eight no in the bubble. Yeah, okay. they're definitely yeah. like you know we we always make fun of Phoenix for sure, but I do think they've got something there. Not that they're, you know there'll be a playoff team or anything, but I think they're definitely you know they've got a nice young core going there. And Drew Holiday, I do agree with Greg that, that him and and JJ are are a really good veteran fits because they do have such a young team. And I, I don't really agree with your point about the cash base thing. Just for, for them right now, all of those guys are on their rookie deal. So I don't right. really know how much it matters. And then they're just going to be adding young guys along the way. Uh, I, I guess it does matter once Ingram signs that contract, because I would just be absolutely shocked if anything else happened. Right. Like the dude just had an amazing year, especially considering what he's what, uh, what else he's shown in the league. Like he had his best year in the NBA by far and made the all-star team. Like I, I just, that's not the type of guy I see them walking away. I think they're going to pay whatever it takes. Uh, but, but yeah, the, I mean, they've got, the they, they've got one else. of the better young cores. Well, here's the other thing. I mean, I forgot Golden State. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're a top he, three. Of, they're a top three. I mean, because you say who is the worst team in the West this year? It's the team that's getting Curry and Clay back. And, mm-hmm. has, and has a top three, what, a top two pick, right? And then mm-hmm. the other team is, I mean, Minnesota – they did add Russell during the season and they got the number one pick in the draft. So, exactly. so, yep. what, so when you look at all of those teams, I mean, and, and Sacramento has young talent. They never know what to do with it. Remember they almost made the talent. playoffs like two seasons ago and, and people kind of thought this year that they would take a step ahead. So like, you know, Phoenix might do the same type of thing. And maybe mm-hmm. Sacramento is the one that kind of climbs back up. Cause there's always that team that finishes the season's good. And, 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 I mean, that finishes the season strong and mm-hmm. then kind of comes back next season. is isn't as strong. So I feel like it's going to be one of Sacramento or Phoenix. Well, it could be, but it should it should be Phoenix. I mean, with the with the, the center play they got from Aiton at the end of the season. Oh and, yeah. And Booker emerging as an all star. So I, yeah, I just if they think, resign Aaron Baines, they're they're going <laughs> you know, this, we'll, we'll talk about Aaron Baines in another episode. But yeah, I mean I think when you look at all those teams, if you're New Orleans, I mean I think when Stan comes into this job, it's okay, this is a long-term project. I mean, they're not hiring Stan to get them to the playoffs next year. They're hiring Stan to maybe they do, but they're hiring him to create so that the foundation for Zion taking that step. And even look, even with the Cavs, if you look at LeBron drafted in 2003, didn't make the playoffs the first year, right? Then he does ultimately make the playoffs. They got to the finals in year four, right? So 2006, 2007. So it's going to take some time. All right. When we come back, uh, we've got a word here from safe cubbies, uh, which definitely want to check. You should check out at safecubbies.com. When we come back though, uh, we're going to talk about the heat's perspective on it. What would you give up for drew holiday? And is it worth taking the chance that he opts in the year after. 
I want to introduce you to another of the great new sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and it is a sponsor that would be important in any time if you want to have a beautiful workspace, but it's especially important now when you need a safe one as well, and that's safe cubbies.com which offers modular office solutions designed to elevate your open office into a modern and safe environment at any budget you can personalize your workspace with options like whiteboards magnetic panels acrylic sheets and graphic branding most of the surfaces are non-porous for easy cleaning and can be removed or replaced within minutes now this is for workplaces they've got a bunch of different options on their professional series but also they've got private room solutions dividers and sneeze guards and they have a class classroom series as well. So if you're involved with the school, this is definitely something your school should check out, of course, if we have school in the fall. And that's the point here. We're entering a new normal period with COVID-19. SafeCubbies.com, which is locally owned, is the place that you want to go. The phone number is 754-216-1071. Again, that's 754-216-1071 or SafeCubbies.com. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on five on the floor. I've got Greg Sylvander. I've got Alex Lito. Make sure, again, to check out our YouTube channel. Also, check out my new show on onsideradio.com every day from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern. All right, let's get to it from the Heat's perspective, Greg. So, from New Orleans' perspective, he's a valuable player. You don't have to trade him. You could keep him. You can make him sort of a lead guy in your quote-unquote culture. Stan's going to value his defense, no question about it. I know David Griffin values him. So they're they're not going to part with him easily. So you're going to have to make an offer that not only is going to be attractive to New Orleans, but is going to be a better offer than other teams. We heard today that Brooklyn might have interest. He makes a lot of sense there. I know they have a lot of guards, but he would give them something a little bit different to play off of Kyrie perhaps. And maybe you move Dinwiddie, maybe you move yep. Levert, maybe you don't resign Joe Harris, although I think they should. Um, there's going to be other teams that are interested. He's a fit with the Lakers. I don't know what they could trade for him. Okay. But there's, there's other teams around the NBA where he would make sense. What is the offer that you would make to attract two guys who know the heat very well. David Griffin's very familiar with the heat um, has a relationship with Andy uh, you look at uh, uh, Stan, obviously he's very familiar with the heat. What would be the offer that you would make that would attract their interest, but not be too much. It's my standing offer for basically any player that's available via trade right now. That's not in the um, multi all-star completely changes the landscape for Miami type of player, like the drew holidays and Victor Oladipo's of the world. My offer is expiring contracts, AKA Kelly Olenek and Andre Iguodala Kendrick Nunn, the 20th pick. And then KZ Akpala is the thing that you kind of have to gauge on whether you want to throw that in the mix. I'm not going any further than that. The Duncan Robinson ideas, the Tyler Hero ideas, I'm not feeling that at all. Um, if we're talking about a Bradley Beal trade, um, I even start to flinch a little bit there. I know I've caught some flack for that. But I really think that like you hold on to those guys because of their cap numbers. And so essentially, it's what I said, the expirings, Kendrick Nunn, the 20th pick. And that's where I just feel like there's going to be a team that outbids and I personally don't think it's worth throwing I mean like what additional are you going to throw into the deal are you going to swap Duncan Robinson into this trade like I just feel like that's a short-sighted move um, particularly if uh, Drew were to opt in and then kind of foil your 2021 plan so that that's kind of my max offer Alex um, would you put either Hero or Duncan Robinson in a deal to get this done probably not like uh just the only way that I would even think about doing something like that is if the Heat, you know, got some, something going on under the table. They know that Drew's going to work with them. Might even take a pay cut if they, if you know, if they strike gold in 2021 or some something else like that. But other than that, like I, my my gut is to go with everything Leif just said. Like that was my package. You know, none one of the expirings. Maybe you know, I mean, both of them. Olenek and Iguodala, I I, I think are vets you want to have around. Specifically, Iguodala, we know. We know about him and his character. I mean, maybe that's a way that they can kind of get one back and also one who who, who probably helps their team still is a decent rotation player. So maybe, you know, Iguodala, none, uh, the 20th pick. And then, you know, you really got to, again, with the KZ thing, I'm not trying to throw him in, but I yeah. think if, if you try to like really sweeten the deal, you're throwing in three young players plus a vet. And I, I think that's kind of the best way that you can keep Duncan Robinson out of the trade. I think Tyler Hero is obvious. No way he goes out on a trade like this. I think Duncan is the obvious swing piece because, my God, would him 
with Duncan Robinson flying around like Zion Williamson on the court, like it's just, it would be ridiculous. I think he'll be an amazing fit with them. He, for sure, they would want to try to get their hands on one of the two shooters. But I think like that package with KZ, like if everything comes down to it, and again, like everything that I said on all the depot pod, if they, you know, they evaluate Drew to be healthy enough and, and everything is fine with, with uh, you know, if they think that KZ maybe isn't, that much of a blue chip prospect compared to Duncan, then maybe you go that route. But at the end of the day, I don't know that I go further than that. All right. So you, you hit on a bunch of things there that I want to hit on kind of one by one. Um, the first thing that we're, I want to talk about Oladipo in a second in this context, but the first thing is uh, Akpala to me is the sweetener. And, and this is a decision I think that the heat are going to have to make this off season. Like, do they really view him as a guy who's going to be a core, not just a rotation piece, but a core lead guy. And they made a trade that suggested that they do. Okay. And so I think it's the same conversation, Greg, we're going to have with all of these trades where if I'm David Griffin and Stan Van Gundy, and, and again, I have a sense for the kind of players they like Casey Akpala makes a hell of a lot of sense. I mean, he's, he's on the same timeline as Zion. Um, I don't know what kind of a shooter he's going to be, although that's been developing, but you're talking about building. I, I think what they're going to want to build there is an ultra athletic team that that that's what they're going to do. It's going to be, it's going to get up and run a little bit more. Stan was trying to do that a little bit in Detroit with Drummond as a core piece. It didn't really work. Um, you know, particularly some of the other pieces he added. Although Stan did some things up there that were a little better than people game. I mean, he had Spencer Didwitty there as a second round pick. They just never really used him. They had some other guys that they brought in that might've made some sense. Uh, he got some heat for a couple of the draft picks, which was somewhat earned. Um, but I kind of, I got that what he was trying to build there, the, the Reggie Jackson trade. I understood it. Um, I think he's going to build, try to build an ultra athletic team, an exciting team that gets up and down the floor. Casey Akpala makes a lot of sense for that. Is there any scenario? And, and then I want to touch on um, what you were talking about, Alex, about Duncan specifically, because I think JJ Redick may be the thing that can, can make that. We talked about that before the pod, make it feel a little bit better. Would you trade KZ? If they say it's KZ, the package you're offering, but you got to give us Akpala. Or do you say, we're going we're gonna to re-sign Derek Jones Jr. and send, you, send him there instead? That we definitely don't do. I, 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 the DJJ ship has sailed from my perspective. I would actually, in that moment, probably go ahead and, and include KZ Akpala. Uh, just knowing Riley's history, that's a move that it, it, it kind of, it's, Yes, it's cashing in a young asset, but it's not pulling all the chips to the table and you are making a move that's it's you know absolutely a win now type of move that that makes the team better right this moment. So I think Riley would probably lean on the side of including him and so would I. Duncan Robinson, as you say, and we're going to get to it, that's a completely different conversation. Alex, actually I want to pivot to Duncan with you now. If you can get JJ Redick back in a deal, does it change the equation? Because we know the relationship he has with Jimmy. Jimmy's going to dictate a lot of these decisions. He may not be overt about it, but they know who he likes and they want to make Duke him guy. Happy. He deserves it. It's no, no I'm saying another Duke do, guy, do by take... the way, for for Harrison, of course. Well, I think this Duke guy they would take. I think this Duke guy has. I, I don't want him here because he's going to challenge us for best podcast in the market. Look, well, I, I've um, never agreed that they should only go with Kentucky Jimmy. guys. And and by the way, Reddick's part. Like, we 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 do a better job. He he's a great. He, he does a good job, but. We're, we're, we're dusting him. No, but uh, <laughs> I want to get JJ on here. So don't do that. All right. But, but what do you, uh, what, what, what does it, because you're talking about JJ at $13 million next year is not a bad deal for a guy who is in my view, still a pretty decent defender. He's a great shooter. He's a great teammate. I mean, he's okay as a defender. He's not bad. Listen, listen, he's not bad. Uh, I, he's better than Duncan at this stage. Is I don't not? know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, JJ, I mean, Duncan gives you more size. JJ is, I, is, I is a really good comparison to Duncan Robinson here because just like their play style, obviously Duncan Robinson, and he he also goes on as a correspondent uh, on JJ Reddick's podcast. He like They're like friends or whatever, so it's a good comparison. I mean, them getting traded for each other will be, will be kind of funny. But no, I mean, it does soften the blow, no doubt, if you're the heat. Like I think, like I said before, I would be against trading Duncan Robinson. But if you do, getting back a Reddick, who is virtually the same type of player as Duncan, who gives you a really similar type of impact that he would instantly be able to run the same type of actions they have been with Duncan with Reddick and still be, you know, almost as effective, probably like 90% as effective. I think that definitely softens the blow. Uh, I, I, you know, people have been mentioning that too. Like a lot of heat Twitter will, will mention Reddick and I was against it just because I, I was against the idea of adding him 
uh, as just like by himself because I think they need more defense than offense right now. But if you know, in, in a trade deal with Drew Holiday, where by, you know we did a whole episode on guard defenders and saying that Josh Richardson was the best available. If Drew Holiday becomes available, he is the best guard defender out of all those guys, yes. and it's not even close. Other than you know, he's the best. Other than the Gary league. Payton, the, I mean, other than Gary Payton the second, when Nikias is number one, but uh. And, and I do respect the guys' opinion on that, but hell yeah, like Drew Holiday is that guy. Like he he absolutely plugs that hole for you. So I think like getting Reddick back in that deal would make sense. And especially since he doesn't get in the way of the 2021 cash space. And I can't emphasize enough how good at guard defense Drew Holiday is. Like remember what he's done to Damian Lillard in the playoffs. And like, mm-hmm. I was looking at his advanced stats and, you know, I was comparing him to Oladipo and Lowry, you know, some guys who are kind of considered more or less in the same level, two-way shot creators, et cetera. I mean, he's right there with all of them, man. And and his he, he's definitely ahead of Oladipo. I think Lowry is only a better player to have just because he gives you more threes and more free throw attempts, which are things you want. But Holiday is just as effective as a playmaker, is, is better at getting to, you know, the rim and scoring at the rim and is a better and more versatile defender, I think, than Lowry is and is also younger. So I think Lowry, like, he's a great option. And I think Oladipo – is another good option, but Holiday should be looked at as right there as, as, you know, some of the best that they've got available. Like I think his guard, his defense and everything that he brings you, especially as a great rebounder, as a guard, like he is that good of an option to me. Okay. But let's look, we're, we're talking about, would you make the trade now? Like for instance, like with Duncan, <laughs> well, no, but, he, but here's what I'm saying. It, what you're talking about with Duncan and Redick. Okay is basically the trade they made this off season, this season. They basically traded a guy who could become Andre Iguodala, okay, for older Andre Iguodala. They traded Justice Winslow for Andre Iguodala. In a sense, trading Duncan Robinson for J.J. Redick is kind of the same thing. I mean, you're trading a guy who's – Duncan's 26, right, so he's a little older than Justice was – you're trading for 36 year old in Reddick, same age as same class as Iguodala. They just made this trade to get better now while staying flexible. It's the same damn trade. So the question is, would Riley do it? Absolutely. He do it. He just did it. He's done. He's done it all. He, he does it all the time. Would he, would he include Duncan Robinson to get JJ Reddick? If it means he can land drew holiday. If you include Duncan. Absolutely. And, and by the way, I, I agree. Like, it definitely stands to reason that that's something that Pat would be considering doing. We know there's more voices involved, blah, blah, blah. But if Duncan is in there, like, I think you're taking out KZ and the number 20 pick yeah. from the deal. Yes. So so you beat me to it. I, I think that coming off the heels of this historic season Duncan Robinson just had, his value around the league is – it's one of the few times where it may actually be aligned with heat fans value in Duncan Robinson. He's a cost controlled player on a minimum deal. You can keep him within your organization going forward. He just had an unbelievably productive three point season in a league that is starved for these kind of in his first sharp year. shooters. Correct. Exactly. And um, although there were some lumps in the playoffs, a lot of that had to do with the attention that he drew. So like if you exactly. have teams around the league that have primary scores and they want to shake them loose, and get them easier shots. Duncan Robinson is an attractive asset. Pat Riley, Andy Ellisberg, those guys know that. So I think that if Duncan were to get involved in this type of scenario, you're right. Some of the stuff that we've talked about is the the key elements of any trade package Miami is going to put together. You may be able to keep a 20th pick. You may be able to keep, keep a KZ Akpala. Yeah, no doubt. And the other thing about it, and I can tell you, one of the things that Griff follows uh, he's very big on the analytics and impact on other players. He used to show me the sheets when I was not a big Kevin Love fan and Griffin was trying to convince me of the impact that Kevin Love was having on other players on the team. He would bring out these sheets to practice. He follows all that stuff and Stan follows some of it too. He's not a pure analytics guy, but he's aware of what's going on. So they will know what Duncan Robinson's impact is. I think Alex, when we had Stan on the pod, he talked about it. So I, there, there definitely is going to be interest there. There's no question. Um, and when we come back, uh, we've got a word here from Manscape. When we come back, we're going to close this because I, w- I want to pose one question to these guys about somebody else we've done a pot on. We'll get back to our episode here in a second. Before we do, I want to tell you about another of the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. You know, Knicks are no good in the NBA. You're familiar with that? The Knicks are no good? Well, Knicks are no good when you're shaving certain parts of your body either. 
So that's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. I never thought I would actually say that on a podcast. And just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. When I tell you this is premium, I mean, premium, the battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. The waterproof technology allows you to groom in the shower. One of the coolest features is the LED light, which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming. And let's not forget about the charging stand. Show your mower off loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB. If you're listening to me speak right now, I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Make sure you trim yourself. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code 5RSN at manscaped.com. And now this is where I end my career. Your balls will thank you. And now back to the episode. All right, Ethan Skolnick back here on five on the floor. Again, check out fivereasonsports.com. All right, Alex, you and I spent 55 minutes talking about Victor Oladipo. So let me throw this out here right now. We love bringing up that we went 55 minutes. We went 55 freaking minutes. This one's 30. (laughs) This is more in range. let, Let me bring this up to you right now. You have the same package for both players, right? For Drew Holiday, who the advantage to him is he's healthy. He's known as a team guy. He's an elite defender. He's won playoff series. I mean, like you mentioned, Lillard, he won them that playoff series. Okay. On the other hand, you got Oladipo, who's a little bit younger than than Drew, doesn't have as much wear in his tires, comes in a little bit banged up, though. They weren't real thrilled, even the heat, with kind of the way that Oladipo, you know, handled himself in the bubble and in that playoff series. The other advantage, though, with him is he's just got the one more year which means you don't have him locked up for the following year, but you also don't have the question of whether or not you want to keep him on an option. Who do you want more? Same package. Mm. Which of those teams do you want to take that? Because they, you may have a situation with Indiana too, where you're dealing with a heat guy because it's possible Dan Craig gets the coaching job still. Which of those two players would you, and which of them would you? Wait, wasn't the spot the filled? For? Yeah, the Raptors oh, assistant. Um, got oh, they the went with Finch. The, no. N- no, um, I, his last name is... I can't even Oof. pronounce it. Nate, Nate B. Oregon or something oh, like okay. that. All right. So see, I was off on that. I forgot about that. All right. So you're not dealing with the person. Sorry. Uh, God, how did I miss that? All right. So who do you want more? Who's more attractive, not just as a player, but with their current situation? Contract. That is a tough one, man. That is a really, really tough one. I mean, you know, I compared the, I compared both of them with Lowry just to, you know, get guys. They're all, they're all different, right? They all have different games uh, and they're all will be slightly different fits. So we're really kind of pinching at the margins here. I think like Holiday would be a better off-ball player than Oladipo. Even not that Oladipo can play off-ball, you know, he kind of got to the top of the draft because of how smart he was as a cutter as well when he didn't have the full offensive package in college. And you know, I think he he would be a good fit to the system, especially with his winning this willingness to shoot. I mean, Holiday's uh, three-point rate has climbed up over the past few years too. Like I don't think his uh, willingness to shoot would be a problem, but I do think Oladipo is more willing to shoot. He's younger and th- it's still tough because like, I think holiday's defense is something that, that make is a swing is like a, a swing factor here. Where it's like, okay, I, I take the guy with the elite skill there where like he might be the best guard defender in the league or he's right. He's right up there. And I think uh, it, it makes it really tough. Like I might swing drew here just because of that. Like I think the elite skill thing is really important. I think he could become a better shooter and uh, would be taking a lot of good threes here, especially because of the amount of shooting that they already have. Like I think holiday will be the most seamless fit. Oladipo maybe gives them a higher ceiling a little bit. Cause I do think when he's at his best, he's still a very, very good guard defender and gives you more shot creation. So like I lean Oladipo, I mean, I'm sorry. I lean Drew holiday a little bit just because of the defense stuff being that much better. But I, I honestly, I can see it either way, man. I'm sorry to say it. I've said it uh, so many times on this pod, but I'm going to go, go, I'm going to go through. See, way. That's I, right. I go- I go opposite. I, I, and I understand why you would go drew because of all the things you said. And, and the point of attack defense stuff is so crucial. I think it's probably the biggest need in terms of having a guy who can create and, 
guard the point of attack. Uh, Drew Holiday fits the bill, but I'm going Oladipo. And it's because one, I think ultimately it's not going to take the same package. I think it's going to take more to get Drew Holiday than it, will, than it will take to get Oladipo. So as much as we want to, in theory, talk about things all being equal, I just don't think it's going to trend in that direction. And the other thing is this, is that with him, with, with not having to hash out the player option situation with Drew and kind of toe the line there and there could oh, be some yeah. uncertainty, um, I feel like Oladipo you can with a clear conscience know that you're going into 2021 and yes we are ready the, the team is ready to go now to win a championship this is not about uh thinking just about the future but you can go into that meeting with a guy like Giannis and you can say literally we can have four guys in Bam Jimmy mm-hmm you know, Oladipo and Giannis. And then obviously you could also have Hero and, and Duncan Robinson included in that as well. So I just feel like it it lines up better with the with the master plan. Let's just say that. I'm with you um, on it lining up better with the master plan. I just wonder how much influence Jimmy's going to have because I, I and, and I wonder how much sway that holds. And I'm not saying he doesn't like Vic, but, but he I likes Drew more. He likes Drew more. And, mm-hmm. I, and I just and he's been outspoken about, you know, the way he feels about Drew. And as you've seen we, that video, right? I, I, I saw the video of him, but also the video, you know, the Matt Barnes thing where they had him and Steven Jackson had everybody on their pod. And basically every player came on and said, Drew Holiday is the best guard defender in the league. Jimmy likes Bulldogs. OK, and Drew Holiday is a bulldog, man. Like that guy, he plays hard all the time on both ends. And whatever limitations he has, he makes up for with effort. He's a heat player through and through. Vic, I think he was, but it hasn't felt that way the past year. And that so that's the question of, is that the injury? Is that him being unhappy? But we had Jay Michael Falcos on and he and he covers the Pacers. And he basically said Vic Vic got a little full of himself and the Heat don't love that. OK, and so I'm I'm curious to see where that goes. All right. Appreciate it. We'll do more episodes coming up. Um, there's some stuff that's going to be happening in the next few days. It's going to lead to some episodes next week. So I'm not can't give it away yet, but there's some stuff that's going to be happening. Check out five reasons Check out my new show on onside radio every day at 10 a.m. Thanks again to dash radio and nothing but net for getting us out there around the country. Check out manscaped.com again. Use the code five RSN Biscayne Bay Brewing Company. Ask for it wherever you are. And of course, safecubbies.com. Thanks for sponsoring. Have a great night. Thank you for listening to the five on the floor on the five regional sports network. One, two, three, four, five on the floor. Five.